Welcome back. As we watch results start to come in on election night, one place we'll be keeping a very close eye on is northern New Jersey. That is where Congressman Tom Malinowski, one of the most vulnerable Democrats on the ballot, is trying to win a third term. It's seats like his that Democrats have to win if they want to hold the House. The Cook Political Report rates his newly redrawn district lean Republican. And he defeated his Republican opponent, Tom Keene Jr., by fewer than 6,000 votes two years ago. Now, keep in mind, his redrawn district includes nearly 27,000 more registered Republicans. Joining me now is Congressman Tom Malinowski. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, happy to be here. So the latest polls are showing that Republicans seem to have the momentum right now. And I wonder why you think that is. Is it a failure of messaging, strategy, democratic policies? What do you make of it? Uh -huh. Actually, I don't think that's true. Uh, I've seen some polls that show a slight Democratic advantage. I saw a Fox News poll today that showed that Democrats have the advantage. I don't think anyone has a clue. Uh, I know in my uh, congressional district, I've got a very close race in a district that leans Republican, and yet the polls show it to be tied. There's a significant enthusiasm advantage, I think, on our side uh, in terms of early voting, uh, massive volunteer turnout uh, on my side uh, of this campaign. So I, I feel like at least from where, where, where I sit, we, we're where we need to be. So, Congressman, you, other Democrats, we saw the president today, have made abortion a key issue in this campaign. Uh, and yet, inflation and the economy remain voters' top priorities. So my question for you is, do you worry that you run the risk of over-indexing on the issue of abortion? Or do you think that's the key to turnout and energizing your voters? The key issue is that Republicans have absolutely no plan for fighting inflation, but they do have a very concrete plan for banning abortion. Um, you, you know, I've I've been uh, I've had the same guy running against me for the last four years in my congressional district. Of course, he's emphasizing inflation in all his ads. He's been asked in our debates, "What would you do?" He has no answer. Mm -hmm. uh, the Republicans on Capitol Hill have no answer, apart from we're learning in the last few days. That they do seem to be preparing to shut down the government again to uh, start eviscerating Social Security and Medicare. So, so the, this election, it's not either or, or, should, or, or, or the economy, it's, it's both. Um, Democrats have been doing something about the economy uh, for the last year. And I, I have no idea what the Republican plan is. Well, and you bring up your challengers. So let's talk more specifically about what he has been saying. And frankly, Republicans nationally have been blaming Democrats for spending bills. They say that have contributed to the high inflation. My question for you, Congressman, is why should voters trust inflation won't get worse if Democrats remain in power? They, they have not actually criticized any specific spending. They just talk about spending in general. My opponent well, actually they criticize the series of spending bills that have been passed under this president and under a Democratic-led Congress. Most of them were actually bipartisan. There was, there, there was one that was uh, only Democrats, the American Rescue Plan, which in my congressional district enabled uh, our small towns, our municipalities to keep police officers and firefighters employed to keep our property taxes down, which people here appreciate. Um, I had Republican mayors um, uh, contacting my office and leadership in Congress, urging us to pass that bill back when it was happening, because, you know, the economy was in a Great Depression. Do, and do voters you... trust the party that brought the American economy out of a Great Depression and that then passed legislation to lower prescription drug prices, lower health care costs. Um, I'm proud to run on the stuff we're actually trying to do to lower costs for consumers. And I can't point to a single thing the Republicans are proposing to do. Congressman, just to put a fine point on it, though, do Democrats bear some responsibility for where the economy is right now? It happened on your watch. Uh, what happened on our watch was taking an economy that had tens of millions of people unemployed and virtually every small business shut down in this country taking it to a point where we rescued the jobs, rescued the businesses, and now we have a responsibility because we are the party in power to deal with inflation, to deal with the cost of living. And again, we are actually trying to do something about that. We're passing bills that lower cost of living. Republicans say they'll cut, that they'll, they'll cut spending, right? I guess that's the only specific thing that they've said. Yeah. But if you had a 
single Republican on your show who's given you a single example of what they would have. Congressman, let me ask you about one of the issues that uh, has been raised again by your challenger in your race. You remained under investigation by the House Ethics Committee over allegations that you failed to properly disclose hundreds of thousands of dollars in stock trades. You have said that errors were made. It was the result of carelessness. But what is your message to voters who might worry that the investigation raises questions about your conduct and your ethics? Well, the, the investigation was over a year ago. It was, it was a report by uh, the Office of Congressional Ethics, which established, which confirmed everything that, that I said, that there was late reporting, that I had no involvement or even prior knowledge of the, the trades that my broker was making. Ever since then, uh, I put my entire retirement savings in a blind trust. I'm one of only about 10 members of the House or Senate who's done that. Um, I strongly support legislation that would prohibit uh, any member of Congress from uh, uh, owning stock. Um, I've took, taken issue with leadership in my own party for the last that bill. And my opponent, who's brought this up, is actively trading stocks as we speak, pharmaceutical stocks, oil company stocks, uh, even Chinese stocks. Mm -hmm. So if that's the issue they want to run on me on, they, they, they put up the wrong candidate. Well, um, Run against. Let me ask you about the future of the Democratic Party. Do you think President Biden should be on the ballot in 2024? Is he the strongest candidate to represent Democrats in the next presidential election? I think there's something wrong with our politics when uh, more than two years before a presidential election, that's the question. Um, I don't want President Biden to make that decision right now. I want President Biden to be focused on inflation, on gas prices, on the war in Ukraine, on protecting the country. We will all, after the midterm elections, you, take that back and think about that. I, do you want honestly, him to campaign with you, Congressman? Because that is a, a question for right now, right here and right now. Do you want the president to be campaigning with you in these final weeks of the campaign? I've had the president to my district several times. He, he's come to, uh, to deliver flood relief after Hurricane Ida. He's come to talk about um, the importance of child care and early education. But do you want him in these final weeks of the campaign, Congressman? I'm happy to have anybody uh, come and stand with me to deliver for voters in my district. The former president came to my district repeatedly to play golf. All right. Congressman Tom Malinowski, thank you so much for your time and stay safe on the campaign trail. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.